back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have another top 10 action figure video for you guys. WWE figure countdown coming at you. Top 10 best WWE figures, in my own personal opinion, of the year so far. So 2021, it's been an epic year of action figures, man, with new, you know, introduction of great technology into our figures and great aspects, new things, new accessories, all kinds of great things coming forward, guys. 2021 has been immaculate, and today we're gonna we're gonna break down my top 10 personal favorite figures figures we've gotten so far and uh, yeah we'll get into all of that we'll break it all down and you guys can let me know down below what your favorite figures are of the year so far and if you want to play along guess my top three before we even start the video that would be a really cool thing if you guys could guess it just a little spoiler none of these figures in front of you are featured in the top 10 countdown so these are just some of those honorable mention figures you got the elite 84 jeff hardy this is the fix up this is the actual base figure just with a head swap you have the legends undertaker the two-pack triple h ultimate edition edge and and Macho Man, and then we have the fan takeover, Seth freaking Rollins. So without any further ado, guys, let's go ahead and break down my top 10 figures of the year thus far and see what we can come up with. All right, guys, so coming in at number 10, we have the Elite 85 Undertaker. This is from the Undertaker's match with AJ Styles at last year's WrestleMania in the Boneyard match. Really, I mean, it all comes down to just, I love how they did the buckles and the and the bracketology that's going on on here with the, with the bells and the whistles and the little buckles and straps and all that good stuff. They really knocked it out of the park. Another thing that's great about this figure is the head sculpt. It's a fantastic head sculpt. I mean, this looks just like Undertaker. I think it looks just like him from the Boneyard yard match. I couldn't leave this out. It's just a really fun figure too, man. I know it does have the pinless, you know, joints down here, which kind of make it a little rickety in the legs, but it still poses around nice and I like it a lot. Coming in at number nine, guys, it may be a shock to you. It may not be. Let's get into it. Fan Takeover Series number two, Randall Keith or Randy Orton, man. I mean, I am just, I am in love with the Ruthless Aggression era. It is the era of wrestling that I got to see the most of throughout my history of life, and it's just so great, man. Growing up as a kid watching Randy Orton, he's my second favorite wrestler of all time. I love the trunks. I love that we're getting another legend killer era of Randy Orton. This is only our second one. The first one was way back in Elite 49. This one has other dated head sculpt. We actually got his signature posing hands without any tape on it. I love the WrestleMania 20 gear and it's just beautiful. It looks absolutely beautiful. I love this figure. Really nostalgia for me. And you know, nostalgia points play a, hard, a large part for me and you know, my favorite figures. If it, it kind of, when I look at a figure that gives me great nostalgia, it's like I'm looking into like, like it looks like I'm going back in time kind of. Like I'm looking at a piece from my childhood and it just really brings me back to that moment in time and it's really great. But Randy Orton comes in at the number nine spot. I really appreciate this figure. Definitely go track this down on Amazon. Coming in at number eight, guys, it may be a bit of a surprise, but we have the Elite 85 Carrion Cross. Now, if you guys know me, you know that I'm not the biggest Carrion Cross fan, but this figure is actually pretty bomb. I like the head sculpt. I think that they nailed it with the formula outside of the weird lower legs, which we have since fixed on action figure surgery. But it's just a really fun figure, man. I mean, it poses around well. He is on ball joints. Uh, it's pretty plain Jane, but you get the entrance coat. It looks like Carrion Cross. The head sculpt's awesome. I mean, great posability. Feels good in the hand. Not much you can complain about and it's a new character in elite form i mean what do you want man at time of recording he is not the nxt champion yet but by the time you see this video probably nxt champion so to my future self i'm sorry that finn balor lost the title Coming in at the number 7 spot, guys, I'm going with Elite 84, Rhea Ripley. Now, Rhea Ripley is a fantastic figure. I think she came in she came in high on our Elite 84 ranking system. Again, just like Elite 85, take her tons of great buckles and belts and designs going on. I actually like the head sculpt as far as the likeness is concerned. I'm not big on the hair sculpt. I think that could have been improved, but it is a Rhea Ripley. I think it looks great and everything like that. This is a figure that I think a lot of people are going to be highly sought after. And if you guys haven't tracked down this figure, it may be too late now. Maybe through the roof, who the hell knows? But all the belts and buckles and stuff and studs, I mean, this is just great, man. Great details, looks like her. I'm a big fan of Rhea Ripley, so this came in high on my ranking. 
Coming in at number six, guys, we have Elite 85 Bray Wyatt. Now, Elite 85 Bray Wyatt is a figure that a lot of people were shocked that I had so high on my Elite 85 ranking. I think I had him at number one out of all of Elite Series 85, but I really, I mean, it's a great head sculpt. It's a repeat head sculpt, but it may have came in higher on the list simply because the ringside exclusive Bray Wyatt Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt was so tragic and terrible that this one just knocked that one out of the park. I mean, we have the sculpted sweat underneath the torso there. He gets really good posability. The legs are a really nice sculpt. He can pose really well. I love this leg mold. I know it's the orange pants. If this was khaki pants and this shirt was a little bit lighter red and a lot better and more accurate red, this figure would probably be top three, no doubt about it. And maybe if it had like a belt here or like a bottom of a sweater sculpt or something, but I still like the figure a lot. It also has double freaking jointed elbows and it's just a great figure, man. This is a really fun figure and I'm uh, very happy that we got this Bray White. I just wish the colors were better and more accurate, which kept it a little bit lower on the list, but it's still a really great figure. Coming in at number five, guys, maybe a bit of a shocker, but we have Roman Reigns from Elite 84. Now, I know you're probably like, that's such a plain Jane figure, and you're right, but just because something doesn't have a ton of, like, great things going on for it, like attire-wise or whatever, a great head sculpt and a figure that really, like, looks identical to a certain character or wrestler on TV really gets high points in my book. I know it doesn't have the back tattoo either, but I love this head sculpt, the True Effects version of the Elite 65. I know it came with the Wreck Everyone and Leaf shirt, it had a brand new vest. I love the black gauntlets that we got going on, this new gauntlet technology. I know it was featured on an older Elite, but the tattoo looks really good, and it just embodies Roman Reigns really well, and that's why I like it so much. I like Roman Reigns a lot. I think he's fantastic, so this just embodies him perfectly, and that is what really holds a very high ranking for me. Even when I'm ranking these red, you know, these regular sets, if a figure captures a guy very well, he's probably going to come in high on my list, and that is why Karrion Cross probably ranks so high in my ranking, even though I I don't even like the guy. So there is Roman Reigns at number five. All right, this next one is kind of like a like a little bit of a bonus, but I still think it counts. Coming in at number four, guys, is going to be the Elite 83 Edge. Now, I know for a lot of people, you probably got this in 2021. Technically, I did review this at the end of 2020. However, I still wanted to include it in my countdown simply because a lot of people didn't get it until 2021, and I didn't include it in my top figures of 2020, so it is a 2021 figure, and I will rank it as such because it didn't hit retail until 2021. I don't even think it has a Elite 83 even hit freaking retail yet? Have, has anybody seen it at retail? I don't even know, but I got it in hand at the end of December, and I didn't include it in my uh, figures of the year of 2020, so I'm including it here. Great figure. I love Edge, the, the WrestleMania attire. They did leave out a lot of details. They didn't have this torso on it. It was the Daniel Bryan torso, which is going to deduct some points, but this figure is great. The head sculpt's great. I did have to touch it up a lot, which bring it, like, what? If, they, if this was factory like this, with all the details and the torso and stuff, it would probably again, like Bray Wyatt, would probably be in the top two or three, but it did get a little bit of points deducted because of the details that were lacking and things, but it's still a really great figure and I had to include him right here in the countdown. Alright guys, top three time. Let's get into it. Coming in at the number three ranking is going to be Decade of Domination Series number two, Kane, where he was unmasked. I really do love the interchangeability of this. The unmasked reveal of Kane head sculpt, I really love. I think they capture the likeness, the hair sculpt, the everything. This is pretty much a re-release of the ringside exclusive Kane from the, all those years ago that was really sought after. This is a great re-release. It's a great figure. Uh, one thing that maybe would have made it better is to have sculpted on like belts and stuff and buckles onto the gear but having this cane and getting a new cane elite like this and having the interchangeability to have like the unmasked version of the bald version and just having this uh just this presence of cane in my collection is just so great man i thought it would be a long time until i got this figure in my collection but re-releasing this decade of domination figure is great and i'm really happy that mattel decided to give us this and it had to come in at number three man so i'm going cane decade of domination number two at number three guys top two who do you think it is let's get into it coming in at number two guys is going to be the wwe elite two pack jeff hardy now you're probably wondering why in the blue hell do you got two versions there well brad one of them uh one of them is showcasing the mesh shirt this is like the base figure out of the packaging but it did come with this jersey which raised up the stock of the figure in my opinion i did make this custom head sculpt like fix up jeff hardy with the headband and stuff but this is how the figure came out of the packaging and it's so nostalgic for me man i told the the story of my 
my favorite Christmas present ever, and it had a lot of uh, nostalgic value to this figure and what this figure meant to me. Plus, Jeff's one of my all-time favorites, so this figure just is, is so great, and I know it, you don't even have to include this. I know it's just the jersey, but that jersey is beautiful. It just has an iconic moment in my brain and memories. To go along with this Jeff over here with the mesh shirt and the hair and everything, man, the two-pack Jeff is awesome, and it really just struck a nerve with me, man. Had to put him in my top two of the year so far, and it'll be interesting to see how far he goes in the uh, top 10 figures of the year when we get there. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going into number one. Now, I don't know, like, based off the rest of the countdown, you may not even be able to pick what number one is, but I think I put enough thought into it, and number one is going to be Johnny Gargano from the Fan Takeover Series number two. This figure is phenomenal, bro. Oh my goodness, God in heaven. It's, uh, I mean, what do you want me to say? Getting an actual Marvel-inspired gear in figure form, That I mean, this is literally a Wolverine Johnny Gargano. And the only thing missing is the scratches in the chest, which doesn't bother me that much. Like, yeah, it would have been great to give, but you still get the claws on the wristband. You still get the Wolverine font. You still get this beautiful gear, this font on the back of the Johnny Wrestling. They fixed the Johnny Gargano syndrome. Beautiful head sculpt. They gave him the ripped up torso. What else do you want out of a Johnny Gargano, man? This figure is by far so damn good, and I had to just take my bias out of it. I tried my best. If this was the Iron Man gear, it'd be in the same spot. If this this is the Punisher gear. It'd probably be in the same spot, too. Again, Wolverine, Punisher, and Iron Man are my top three favorite Marvel characters. So, all three of them, it didn't matter which attire we were getting. This figure is phenomenal. They absolutely nailed it. No more Johnny Gargano syndrome. The colors really pop. It's just a really fun figure. The only thing that I don't like is that they removed the ball joints. Now, I did not expect that. I didn't. I guess they had to get rid of the ball joints to uh, give us the no longer Johnny Gargano syndrome, which, I don't know, would you guys rather have no Johnny Gargano syndrome, or would you have, rather have ball joints? The articulation is still really good. I don't think it's really that much hindered like other figures that don't have ball joints, but at the end of the day, man, this is my number one figure of the year thus far. We'll see how it stands when we get to the end of 2021. We get a lot more figures in here and how the, you know, something that's lower than this could rise, you know, as releases come out, you know, opinions change and things come out and you may look at things differently later in the year, but that does it for my top 10 figures of the year so far, guys, in 2021. Before we get out of here, guys, let's get into a random shout out. The shout out is going to go to Undisputed Figure Collector 96. He says, that edge looks like me in the morning. He is actually referring to our action figure setup a couple weeks ago before WrestleMania where, you know, the edge had the, the hair blowing back like you guys saw in the beginning of the video, which is absolutely hilarious. So I thought that was pretty good. Huge shout out to Undisputed Figure Collector 97 for that comment. But thank you guys so very much for tuning in to my top 10 figures of the year of 2021 so far. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Let me know what your top 10 is or your top three or just your favorite figure so far released this year. I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you and don't cross the line. Or do. Or don't. I don't I don't even give a damn. Psych, what are you doing?